There are a lot of cool things you can do with playing cards, but the ribbon spread is one of the easiest things you'll learn while at the same time also being very impressive. So let's get started. Okay, you will need a soft surface. You can also use the carpet or a couch as well as slippery cards. More on that later, but for now, let's get into the basic mechanics. Take the cards in your dominant hand and hold them like so. Now, basically, all you do is push downwards against the cards while you slide them to the side. If it was your first time trying, it probably looked really ugly, like this. That's normal, really. Don't worry. Part of it is just getting used to how it feels. It becomes a muscle memory. Okay, first off, here is a huge tip. Think about your pointer finger as being a regulator. As you do this move, it's riding along there in the back, regulating how many cards are released. Basically, how many cards are allowed to escape is controlled by this one finger. It's really only letting one card go at a time. You can experiment by using more pressure or less pressure until it feels just right. As I was creating this tutorial, I became aware of one other thing that I've noticed that myself and other magicians are all doing. As your hand is moving across, this finger, the regulator, starts to do this. Did you see that? At the end, the finger is basically uncurled. I call this phenomenon the uncurling. And it makes sense because at the beginning, there is this height between the table and your finger. But as it continues to go down, you have to bend that finger back because you're only contacting a few cards towards the end. And one more tip I can offer is some people say that it helps to have a bevel in the deck like that instead of flat. They say you should put a bevel here before you do the spread that it helps them. I feel like it doesn't make that much of a difference, but feel free to experiment and see what works for you. Oh, and by the way, at the end of this video, I'm gonna teach you an easy magic trick you can do using this ribbon spread. So stay tuned for that. Now, if you feel like the cards are spreading too unevenly, for example, a big clump of cards at the end, then all you need to do is focus your energy on letting what will feel like too many cards escape under your finger at the beginning of the spread. Conversely, if you feel like you're running out of cards too quickly at the end, then you need to focus on letting less cards go at the beginning, what'll feel like too few. You know, it's just like if you're trying to throw a rock and hit something and you keep going to the left, well then you aim a little bit more to the right to correct it. Same concept applies here. All right, so now you'll be spreading cards more and more evenly the more and more you practice. And if you wanted, you could be done right there. Simply come with your non-dominant hand and scoop up the cards like that. You could even do it as a really fast flourish if you wanted. Maybe even faster. How about this? Choo, pow, pow, bah! But more fun is riding the wave. Ride the wave. Okay, so for this segment, you do need to be able to spread the cards mostly evenly. If you have too big of a space between your cards like so, and you try to do the wave, it will break. And you don't want that, do you? All right, so when you're ready, you spread the cards out, you come with your non-dominant hands, you're gonna use your finger and your thumb, and just come over here and pick them up like this together. You don't just wanna use your finger without your thumb because then it's gonna kind of go like that. So the thumb is just lightly resting on top to help you lever up the cards like so. Another option that some people prefer to do is you put your fingers down first and just spread on top of them so you could immediately lift up like that. That's not my preferred method because I feel like it interferes with getting a perfect spread at the beginning, but it's just your preference. You can do whichever one you like. Okay, now that you know how to do the wave, there are actually some really fun options. One is you could stick with your left thumb and keep using that. I prefer to hand off to the right hand like this. I think this looks really nice, just like a magician would point at something and magic would happen. The other option, of course, is you could just spread to your right middle finger and keep your fingers spread out like this. That also looks kind of nice. Or you could actually do the wave with another card like so, and this does have a really cool appearance. Or you could even do the wave using two cards. So if I pick up two here, I can go like this, and then you can split the wave in half and have two peaks. You might even call them twin peaks. And if you balance them just right, you can even let go like that. It's whatever you want to do. 
shock wave. Riding the wave was the first option. The other thing we have is the shock wave, which looks like that. It's pretty self-explanatory. You're basically just pushing down and that sends a ripple. You could do a slow shock wave or a fast one. It just depends how quickly you're pushing downwards here. Oh, and by the way, I noticed something randomly that I want to share with you. Remember when I was talking about spreading the cards perfectly evenly? Well, there is a use case for spreading a big clump at the end or at the beginning, and that's with the shock wave. So if I wanted to be able to send the shock wave and have it stop here without hitting my hand, I leave a big clump of cards like this. And when I do the shock wave, it stops here because there's all this weight. So it's not gonna go all the way to the end. But I think it's probably better to spread the cards evenly and have the shockwave go all the way to the end, like that. Anyways, now you know both options so you can do whatever you please. Variation. So with all these options, you can create a lot of different combinations and tailor it to your style. For example, you could start riding the wave and then finish it with a shockwave. Or the way I personally like to do it is I like to do the spread, I like to push down and catch it with my finger, going back and forth a couple times, then shock wave it, scoop it up, and you're done. Additionally, I do feel like this moment here is the most beautiful part where spectators see this. So I really don't like to rush that. I like to go slow and let people enjoy it. Not like this. And obviously, though I haven't done it yet, spreading the cards face up is a great way to show the spectators that all the cards are different or they have a free selection. And one thing I've been doing a little bit but I haven't really remarked on is that you can put an arc in your spread like so and it can look quite elegant. If you're performing somewhere and you have a table set up and you really wanna draw in a crowd, do a gigantic arc like this. As you're setting up your table, people are walking into the room. You could be doing some magic here in the middle, some uh, prestidigitation, what have you. <sighs> or whatever, and it can be a nice way to gather people's attention. Another option is a diagonal spread. In this case, the wave ends up looking kind of interesting. It's kind of like twisting in a way, if you see what I'm talking about there. Another option, instead of spreading them this way, you can rotate the deck and spread them on the short end like so, but it's tall and it's weird and no one will like you if you do it. So there are a lot of options. You can basically have fun with it. Whatever you wanna do. Okay, next up is some troubleshooting tips to help you out if you're having issues. And then we get on to that magic trick that I promised you. Troubleshooting tip number one. If the cards are getting rotated like this, you see how they're straight and then they start going this way. The reason that is happening has to do with where you are putting your regulator finger. If you have it maybe too far back, it can rotate or too far to the front. So you need to experiment and find what's a good area for you. I don't like it exactly in the middle. I like it a little more towards the front. So just experiment and you'll eventually get a nice straight spread like that. Troubleshooting tip number two, the cards that you have. It is important to have good quality cards. They need to be slippery like this. If the cards stick together too much, you're not gonna be able to spread them smoothly. So what I highly recommend, although you can do the spread with lots of different types of cards, if you're having difficulty, I recommend that you try out bicycle playing cards made by the United States Playing Card Company. These are the ones that are generally recommended by magicians. They're pretty much the go-to standard and they have a great quality feel. Anyways, I will put a link below in the description. Check there if you wanna see the Amazon link to where you can buy them. Also, you might be wondering if it matters if the cards are new or old. Well, I just so happen to have a really old deck of playing cards here. You can tell by looking at the sides of the deck. So let's give these a shot, the old ones. See, you can still do the ribbon spread even with old cards. Now it's not perfectly even, it's mostly good, but it is, yeah, 5%, 10% easier with a new deck of playing cards. Anyways, don't let the age of your deck slow you down. It's most important that you have a good quality deck. Again, I put a link in the description below where you can buy standard bicycle cards. Troubleshooting tip number three, make sure you are performing on a soft yet firm and consistent surface. Now this magician's close-up mat is what I'm using, but your couch or a smooth carpet can work also. This type of carpet will work fine. This type of carpet, Probably not. A hard, smooth surface like this glass 
will not work very well. I personally do recommend this type of close-up magician's pad or mat. It works perfectly here. Look at this. It's a thing of beauty and a joy forever. By the way, there are many different options for buying these mats and pads, so if you want to see my personal recommendation on style and size, check in my notes in the description below. I'll put a link there for what I recommend. You generally want a larger pad than you would initially think. I will measure mine and put the dimensions of it in the description below as well. Last issue, issue number four, if you are having trouble riding the wave where the cards get messed up too quickly. Okay, so what exactly is happening here? Well, the problem is you're pushing down too hard Hard with your finger. See, if I push down hard like this, see these huge chunks? I'm pushing so hard, the skin of my finger is contacting multiple cards and even dragging them, moving their position on the table. And then when I come back, it's likely they'll get even worse and eventually fall apart. So how do we solve this? Well, big surprise, just use a really light touch. You don't need a lot of pressure. You're just gently touching the cards as you go. Ah. <sighs> Isn't that better? Don't you feel better? Okay, everyone, now that you've learned the ribbon spread, it's time to apply it, and I'm gonna teach you a simple and easy magic trick. Basically, you're gonna have the cards, they can be mixed. You could have your spectator mix them, or you could mix them yourself, whatever. Then you have the spectator choose any card they want. A totally free choice and they should take it and remember it. In this case, it will be the Eight of Hearts. So their card is over here. Now make sure when they take the card that you close up your spread like this and hold it like normal. You ask them to put their card face down on top of the deck. You haven't seen what it is yet, only they have. So they put it here. And if they say something like, oh, oh I wanna stick it in the middle or whatever, an easy out for that is just say, hey, listen, I'm not that good, okay? This is a simple magic trick. Or another funny line is you can say, hey, listen, I do magic tricks, not miracles. Miracles, America. So anyway, you get them to put their card on top of the deck. Then you cut the cards like so, and you could stop there or you could even cut them more. Just doing some more different cuts. And now comes the moment where you get to use the ribbon spread. So you take the cards, turn them face up, and spread them nice and wide like this. Now, if you want to, you can have a spectator put their hand on your wrist, depending on the situation and if you feel comfortable with that. Otherwise, you can just say, okay, now I'm going to focus and think. But I like having their hand on the wrist because it makes it more of like, you're somehow sensing like getting an intuition from them. So with their hand on your wrist, you go like this over the cards and you're like, huh. There it is, and you push it forward and you found their card. And I didn't just find the Eight of Hearts because I saw it earlier, I found it because I was looking at the card on top of it, the Six of Spades in this case. It was using the concept of a key card. So basically how this works is really simple. Let's take a look at this again. So remember, you're like this, they're taking a card, they got to see what it was, you didn't see it. All I have to do is see what card was on the bottom, in this case, the Four of Clubs. Now, I could have seen this before the trick began, or when they take their card, I can just rotate the deck around and glimpse the bottom card like that. Just keep it casual, no one's gonna notice because they're gonna be looking at their own card, and in that moment, you can glimpse the bottom card. So, because we know the key card is the Four of Clubs, we have them put their card on top, and then when you cut it, you're putting the key card right on top of their card. So when you end up spreading the deck like this, it's like, boom, you instantly see the four of clubs is on top of the spectator's selection. And when you have the cards like this, you can give them multiple cuts and it's not gonna mess it up as long as they are single cuts and you don't do some kind of crazy triple cut. So I think it's just easy to say, okay, we'll mix them up a little bit like this. And then all that's left to do is your ribbon spread and you identify where it is. There it is, four clubs, and there's their selection right beneath it, just like before. So how did you like that magic effect? Smash like if you liked it, if you liked this video, if I helped you learn the ribbon spread. Alrighty guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm making new videos all the time, so be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell if you don't wanna miss those. I'm doing stuff like tutorials, magic reactions, street magic performances, you name it. And as always, I hope that you're having a great day, a fantastic week, and I will see you next time. Yep.